Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the Nust equation. What this Nust equation is and how we are going to derive this Nust equation because this Nust equation is very very important just to understand the electrochemistry first. Secondly, it is, it is very important from the exam point of view because several times derivation of Nust equation has been asked in the question paper. Right? So let's start with the Nust equation but let me tell you this is very very simple derivation and within 2-3 steps you can understand it. But before that you must understand the few terminology which is used here in this equation because it is very very important to understand the electrochemistry and the terminologies which we are going to use in this relationship Nust of Nust equation. So first, what is Nust equation? What does this Nust equation mean? So this Nust equation is the relationship between the electrode potential as well as concentration of the solution and temperature of the system. So this relationship gives us the important parameters for a given reaction and it is very very helpful in electrochemistry and this relationship was deduced by WH Nust. So, what is the electrode potential? First of all, what is the electrode and what is electrolyte? What is the electrode potential? So, here so you can see this assembly and this is the copper plate which is in contact with the copper sulfate solution. This is copper plate. It means it is metallic in nature. So, copper in zero oxidation state and here it is in solution and copper sulfate has copper 2 plus ions how does it means so copper has 2 plus and sulfate has 2 minus and on contact they are having this copper sulfate right so we can consider here copper 2 plus and this is our copper 0 so this is known as electrode this metallic part is known as electrode and this solution is known as electrolyte. Now we are starting with the derivation of this Nust equation. So as I told you earlier, this Nust equation gives us the relationship between electrode potential and concentration and temperature. So how we are going to derive it? It is very very simple. So first of all, we need to consider a spontaneous reaction. So here I am taking this copper and copper sulfate solution say. So for generalization I have written here MN plus. You can also consider copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons and which is in equilibrium will give it on reaction with this electrons it will give copper. Right or copper is deposited over this. This is so this is the half cell reaction fine. Now this half cell reaction, this is in equilibrium. So if it is in equilibrium, then there is an equilibrium constant also. So that equilibrium constant can be written like this. What is that equilibrium constant? So equilibrium constant K is equal to product upon reactant. So what is the product here? Product is this. And what is the reactant? Reactant is this and this. So I have written like this. Now you may have a question why you have not written the electrons. So in comparison to the concentration of metal ion, the mass of this electron is very very less. That is why we neglect it. Now coming to the next relationship which you need to consider. So there is a want of relationship which gives us the relationship between the free energy and the equilibrium constant. So what is that delta G is equal to delta G naught plus RT ln K. What is your K? K is product upon reactant. This is our product, this is our reactant. But now you may have a question again why you have written A rather than writing the square brackets in which we are going to represent the concentration. Actually when you are in higher classes then rather than using the concentration term we are using the activities. So here this is the activity of the product divided by activity of the reactant. 
and this relationship is known as von Hoff relationship. So this you need to remember first. Second thing which you need to remember to derive this equation is the relationship between delta G and the EMF of the cell. So what is this EMF? EMF is the electromotive force and just because of this electromotive force or difference in the electrode potential elect electric charge is moving in within the cell. So this free energy which is represented by delta G and the electromotive force which is represented by E cell in a reversible cell, reversible cell the reaction is reversible. Electrical energy produced at the expense of decrease in free energy means we are having the electrical energy produced per mole is equal to NFE in a cell. When cell reaction is in equilibrium, when cell is in equilibrium, then the electrical energy which is produced per mole, you please remember this per mole, which is equal to NFE. F is the Faraday's, N is the number of moles of electrons, and E is the electrical energy or we can say electromotive force of the cell. And this work electrical work is done at the expense of decrease in free energy means decrease in free energy means minus delta G decrease in free energy can be written as minus delta G is equal to NFE it is plus but previously I have written delta G is equal to minus NFE but the appropriate term is if you understand so decrease in free energy is equal to NFE. NFE is the electrical energy which is produced by this decrease in free energy. So that is the another relationship. And here what is this F? F is the electrical charge per mole of electrons. This is important and you might aware about this. And how we are going to calculate this Faraday's? For one mole we are having this many number of molecules. 6.023 into 10 raised to the power 23 and what is the electrical charge? So 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 and if we multiply both we get 96500 coulombs per mole. This is per mole, right? So this is important to understand. So I hope you getting these three points. First is equilibrium between the reaction of the electrode. Second point is want of reaction. Want of reaction. Third, the third one is relationship between decrease in free energy is equal to NFE. Only these three points you need to remember and your NUST equation is done. So here N is the number of electrons which are involved. E is the EMF of the cell. Now we get this. As we know that minus delta G is equal to NFE. And in some of the text you will find it. Minus delta G is equal to work done and this work done is maximum at equilibrium. So this work done is equal to NFE and this is a known expansion work. So why it is known expansion work? Because delta G is at constant temperature and pressure. So that is why this is known as known expansion work. So you might not get confused with this what is written over there. Now if we record this delta G at standard conditions then it will be represented by delta G naught and this EMF of the cell is also written as E naught. This naught represents the standard condition means one atmospheric pressure and the temperature is 298 kelvins right. So on putting these values of delta G and delta G naught in this want of reaction then we get this. Now if I divide this relationship by minus NF then what I will get? So this reaction will be returned like this E is equal to E naught minus RT upon NF ln A product upon A reactant. What all the terms means here? So this R is equal to gas constant which has values 8.314 joule per kelvin per mole. T is the absolute temperature means 25 degrees centigrade or 298 kelvins and is the number of electrons involved in the reaction valency of the ions say copper copper 2 plus so two electrons are involved the next is faraday's constant which is 96500 coulombs per mole 
and here this value which is written in the square bracket that is concentration and the unit of the concentration is moles per liter this this is the ln ln is equal to 2.023 log base 10 right and this ln is also written as log base e if i solve this equation then i will get this e is equal to e note minus this ln a product upon a reactant so from where this 0 0.0591 comes so on putting the value of rt upon f so rt upon f if we solve this value this is the r this is the t and this is the f then we get joule per coulombs the unit here you can see kelvin cancelled out by this kelvin is cancelled out by this kelvin and this mole is cancelled out by this mole so i will get joule per coulombs and this joules per coulomb is equal to volts so the potential of the electrode will be determined in terms of volt as you know if you have very low concentration solution then the activity terms can be replaced by the concentration terms pure solids we have this m in concentration is equal to 1 so on putting the value here we will get this relationship now we are now considering the complete cell so here we are having this copper electrode and here we are having this zinc electrode so if suppose i am writing this two different electrodes with the solutions of respective salts so this is the complete reaction actually if say if i write electrode reaction in this manner say here it is n m and n n plus plus n electrons then i will get n if i subtract these two relations then what i will get i will get m n plus these two cancelled out minus n n plus this gives me m minus n i will bring it here and to this here then i will get m n plus plus n will gives me m plus n n plus so this is how i have written the relationship so you can simply write down like this and then on writing the equilibrium constant because it is in equilibrium so equilibrium constant gives me this into n divided by this into m and this is equal to 1 this is again equal to 1 so i simply write like this now on putting this value of k here so from here we can calculate k we can calculate this concentration of m and if one of the concentration is given we can check the number of electrons involved we can calculate the emf of the cell if we know the concentrations right now we are going to calculate the effect of the temperature on the emf of the cell how this temperature term affect the emf of the cell so from this equation this is the nast equation how this temperature affect the emf of the cell say here the temperature term is involved so we must write it rt upon nf the cons if the concentration of this zinc plus is equal to concentration of copper 2 plus then what we will get we will get the here one so log base 10 1 is can be written as log base 10 10 raised to the power 0 and this gives me 0 value fine and if it there is a 0 term then e is equal to e naught minus 0 fine so e is equal to e naught only so there is at equilibrium when the concentration of both the ions is exactly equal then there is no effect of the temperature or we can say the relationship between the e and e naught is independent of the temperature case number two if zinc 2 plus is greater than copper 2 plus then what is going numerator is having high concentration high value then the denominator means we are getting some positive value more than one and if more than one is there then we are having something some value over there so what we will get e is equal to e naught minus something if we are getting some value right then this e emf of the cell is less than the note of the cell 
So here E cell is less than the E node. And if this is there, then on increasing the temperature, EMF of the cell is decreases. The case number three, when when the zinc 2 plus is less than copper 2 plus, we are having the denominator value is higher than the numerator value. And if it is so, then we are getting 0 point something value ultimately on solving the numerator upon denominator. And if it, it is so, then we are getting the negative value of this logarithmic term. We are getting the negative value of this. Here is the case of greater, here is the case of lesser. So, we are getting the negative value and negative negative will gives us positive value. And if there is a positive value, E naught is there, then E is greater than E naught positive. And if some temperature change is there, then accordingly we will get E EMF of the cell will be greater than the standard electrode potential or we can say increasing the temperature will raise the EMF of the cell. Fine, this is how the EMF of the cell is dependent on the temperature. So this is important from the competitive exam point of view. Now application of Nust equation. So it is helpful to study the effect of electrolyte concentration on electrode potential number one. Calculation of equilibrium constant we can do from this. We can determine the EMF of the cell electromotive force or we can say electrode potential. We can determine the unknown concentration by using this Nust equation as well as we can determine the pH value of the acidic solution and uh, this is important and we will do this experimentally also. So use for finding the valency of the ions. So these are the important applications of the Nust equation. So I hope you find it, this Nust equation helpful. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe my channel. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.